Highways and Byways with Drew Crosby. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to today's edition of Highways and Byways on Vaughn Radio. It's Drew here, and of course, we have a full program as usual. We have music later on today. We'll go back to 1970 and look at two number one singles, one of them by Sly and the Family Stone, and another one, a theme from a very, very famous movie. We'll talk about that later on. Also in business today, Luis Mayer from MGM. We'll look at him as well. Business idioms and expressions, of course, but first, a very, very special guest today in our first half hour. It's good afternoon to Boris Izaguirre. Hello, Boris. Uh, hello. It's so great to to listen to my last name say, say it in English. <laughs> I was practicing. <laughs> you were? Yeah, because yeah, I always have the problem making reservations for restaurants. Oh, my and gosh. And Ruben suggests that I use my mother's name, which is Lobo, but I hate being Mr. Lobo. Because I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of my last name, Isaguirre. And, and, but then when I, went, when I went to school in America, they were always so puzzled by it that I always had to agree with the different interjections they used. So, and there was a time where they called me Isaguirre because, <laughs> because of the I said A thing, I believe. Right, Isaguirre. Well, that's a tough one. I mean, well, But Isaguirre was fun. It was, jo- it was mostly a joke that you could do when you were a teenager. Right. And, of course, it, did, it does apply. But um, <laughs> it, doesn't it certainly does. I uh, am a queer, and, you know I'm, what? and I'm a very queer person too, <laughs> myself. But the thing is that uh, I thought it was all right. So, but you know, you cannot tell a lady in a restaurant, either in New York or London, it's a queer because probably no. she feels sort of like uh, violent by it. You know, right? A little embarrassed by and it. it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the politically correct society that we live on does not allow you to make these jokes anymore. Right, right. Well, that's true. I mean, it's funny. I remember when political or uh, political correctness began, and it was like you had to really bite your tongue and make sure you didn't say something ridiculous, which sometimes makes more sense than the politically correct version. Well, I think I, think I took it when I was a kid in my school, and when they were doing these jokes about the it's a queer thing, I took it as a joke, and as a nice joke. And I think yeah. I, it, it, it's been mostly my reaction to these kind of things, that you have to take it with very good humor. Right. Of course, there are times that you can't, but, um, right. but, but, well, but I think most of the times you could really take it more well-handedly, you know? Right, right. Well, yeah. you said you studied in the United States as a kid, or what did you say, the America, but yes, not the United States? I went to New Hope, Pennsylvania. New Hope, which which was a town full of queers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was like a weekend. Uh, it's like a weekend retreat for New Yorkers. I see. And it was in the eighties. In the eighties, I yeah. see. It's you know, it's a Delaware coast. Okay. And uh, it's like Poughkeepsie, and but, but 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 a little bit lower though. All right. And, and then it's um, it's it's closer to Philadelphia. What was Actually. your, uh, was this the first time you were studying, I mean, that you were an extended period of time in the United States, or had you been before? I have been, like, traveling, but I have been, uh, I, I went to learn my English in London, though, because my brother was studying there, mm-hmm. and then I was there in 1980. I see. Uh, when, when I was 14, and I turned 15 uh, during that time. In London? In London, yeah. That's a great verb, Boris, you know, I turned 15, yes. you know, like we're trying to, you know, of course, Valga Radio, we're here to teach English and cumplir, to turn. That's a strange verb. Well, but I, 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 it, it's not the, the way you use it. I mean, probably. Absolutely. I, you know, yeah. I, I speak a very strange English, though, because I learned it seeing films mm-hmm. and then reading a lot. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after, I, after I have read everything I wanted to read, because I was that kind of kid. Uh, that I felt like an urge to read everything in about two years, two years and a half, mm-hmm. which I believe is a major mistake because you have the rest of your life to enjoy many, many, many books. Right. But then at that time I felt that way and I believed in that. So then uh, when I had finished reading all I wanted to read in English, I turned again <laughs> into magazines. <laughs> and I, and I right. developed my, 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 most of my vocabulary by reading Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair, in, in right, which 80s, is... Um, um, I also had to read Vanity Fair being back in Caracas, which I felt very bad about. And it was like my communication with the, 
with the America I had left behind. Right, because Vanity Fair, I, I agree. I, I used to, I still enjoy Vanity Fair, but it's relative. It's new in Spain. Oh yes, a Spanish version, which I write for. I know you do. Well, Borre, I haven't even introduced you, and, and here we are, ten minutes into the interview. <laughs> but people <laughs> well, know who Borre is. Because you know, my friends and particularly my sister, they're always making uh, fun of my accent in English because they say it's 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 so phony. It's so like it, it's incredibly fake. So. So, um, how do you say I, I wouldn't that? say you, 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 fake or phony. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I would. I don't think it's fake or phony. I think you know everybody speaks. It's poised. It's very poised. But the thing poised. is that because okay, I that had learned be it first in 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 England, so then I had like this this this, this tang to it. But then I I had to uh, sort of like relearn it in Pennsylvania. Right. So like, I, I, I and I was very much. Uh, into uh, speaking very American. You well, see. what sounds more posh? I mean, British English sounds more posh than American English, right? It's supposed to, yeah. But, but you know, they have those things that they're funny about. Like, they, they don't say penthouse. They use top floor. Right, top floor instead and, of... And right, things like that. Yeah, top color. Floor. Color instead of color. Yeah. You know? But I think right. they're fun. I mean, I, I love the English, and I have been living there for the last three years. And uh, most of my friends are not British, which is true. You never get to know a British person, actually, at least not in London. You really? Where, where do you have to go? There's a variety of nationalities <laughs> before you come back to the English. So where do you have to go to meet a Brit if it's not London? <laughs> I suppose you have to go inside the country, right? Like you have to, uh, uh, probably if you go to Birmingham, then you meet somebody British. Or, I see. or Liverpool or Manchester, which is a, a very, 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 very fun city and great for the music. Yeah. Oh, the, oh yeah. Mad, the Ma- Madchester, they called it back in the, in the late 80s when all of the great music was coming out of Manchester. Exactly. And yeah. they have this place, the, the La Finca, mm-hmm. where, they, where they, it was like this, this, this lab for all these sounds. Like a lot of the acid house and things, too, were coming out of there well, yeah. and even boy george right right right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well well you were spending that to talk a little bit about your novel dos monstros juntos you were did you write this in london yes i did it's written in spanish though right i think it, the, the the at least the title can translate very well no two monsters together two monsters together that yeah. would be easy it's not like one of those crazy movies that comes out like you know that has nothing to do with the original title no I, I, I suppose it, like if they ever translated, they, they, they would retain this title. Yes, it's the story. It's the story of a couple, mm-hmm. and I believe couples, whatever their gender, uh, they they are you and I. No, they, yes. they are, they're the two of them, but then they create a third entity, which is the monster, which is the couple. So we're talking about Patricia and Alfredo. Patricia and Alfredo, they are very successful, mm-hmm. and um, um, Alfredo is a very sort of well-known, very well-established chef. Right. And he's, he's opened a restaurant in Barcelona, which great success. And then they moved into New York and opened two ones. And they were also very, very successful with this sort of like, he has a very uh, traditional cuisine, but with uh, some, some sort of like inno- innovative motif. Yeah, innovative, but, yeah. Yeah, and then they move to London, but they, they decide to like sort of like expand this this uh, creativity, what? this 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 gourmet thing okay. into London, but the, the the sad thing or the 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 timing is sort of like tricky because they arrive in London on this on September fifteenth of two thousand and eight right. when Lehman Brothers collapses. Well, wait a second though. Why did they go to London? Were they they were tired of New York? You said something like "Aquí todos hablan." Espanol in New York. Because it's true, you know, the Spaniards, they, they tend to relate to New York much better than to London. Mm-hmm. And then Alfredo and Patricia are monsters. I mean, there are no people you could at first relate to them. So this is like Alfredo becomes this super well-known chef and Patricia is his, is his partner. And then it's like you have one side where they're, they're very glamorous and they live a very, but it's like living a double life, isn't it? Well, I suppose it's, it's more about what has happened the last decade. Okay. I have the feeling that in the last decade, the developed countries felt they were more than developed. They were rich. Mm-hmm. But it was not true they were rich, as we can say now. It, 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 they were probably, we were all probably feeling rich, mm-hmm. but in, in, in fact, we were indebted. We, right. we were all uh, trapped in huge 
uh, mortgages or mortgages. huge debt with right. our banks and with, our, with ourselves too, mm-hmm. with our own consciousness. I see. And, uh, and then the book, it's that, that feeling that I think is becoming quite contemporary. That is, it's about what we did wrong, when did all things started, how come the party ended so abruptly? So it was, yeah, well, right. And it was maybe a false party. Everything was propped up and well, not... Yes, certainly it was a false party, but it was a party yeah. for a while. So you I mean, based, it, it yeah. was a party that lasted a while, and the neighbors were complaining, and people were like saying, oh, no, it's all right, don't worry. I mean, it's just a party. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't just a party. It was something more, right. more, 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 more profound. It, it, was, it was a crisis. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? I mean, it was, it was a havoc at something that was creating damage. So, like, you used the reality. You looked at, like, you looked at the Lehman Brothers crisis, the corruption in Spain, and you also looked at the earthquake in Haiti. Yes, because as... the, book, the, the, book starts, the book starts with a false earthquake. I mean, an earthquake that you can employ as a word, which is the, the, the fallout of an, of an investment bank. Okay. The collapse in an investment bank. That sort of creates a shake. It certainly has shook a lot. Uh-huh. But it's, it's not an earthquake, but you could, you could apply it as a Perfect. financial er- earthquake. Yeah, so that's very symbolic. It's sort of like, boom, it all begins. Right. Um, but then, but then it's, 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 it's still a very abstract thing, you mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not a thing that, it, that, that, that you can touch, that you can feel. Whereas an earthquake in a very, very poor part of the world, you, you certainly realize how devastating that can be. Mm-hmm. So then the book starts in a thing that is sort of like a fiction because it, it takes you a while to realize that what has happened to a bank is really affecting you as a citizen. It's like in, the in many, right. many parts of the world. But then the book ends with a real, real earthquake that you can receive the news in the, in the, on the television or newspapers and see the actual monstrosity of that earthquake, mm-hmm. mm, of that damage. So I think the book is sort of like very... I, am, I, I did work a lot on this book, certainly, and uh, I have no other words to say it in English. I mean, it, it, it was a book that I, I, I thought uh, over and over um, and wrote over and over and, um, um, and sort of like... At the end, all I wanted was to edit, 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 take right. out whatever was 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 not useful right. in in the book. It's it's not it's it's the least baroque of all my books because I, since I am Latin American, I have this relationship with my vocabulary and with language that tends to create huge metaphors and large descriptions. This book is very cold. It's almost like a surgeon working working on a body that is going to operate. Very very <laughs> clean, very eccentric, very very you know like up to the point. Very but, American in that sense. Very American in that sense. Was it difficult to write? You you almost escaped. You went to London to write this. Did you have to leave Spain to get out of this environment? Well, certainly, yes, because I, I I needed to go to a place where I had no neither an agenda nor a phone book. Mm-hmm. I mean, I knew nobody in London but Alfredo and Patricia, and of course right. my husband when he was with me. Right. But then, uh, of course, certainly at the end, it was not like that. I mean, I, I did, I did, <laughs> I, I, I did create a few, few pages of phone numbers during <laughs> these last three years. I was going to say, but, it would be impossible to isolate yourself 100%. No, but it was very necessary because in... But you see, in Spain, I'm, 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 I work a lot on television, and, and, I, and I write for many, many medias, and, and I also do t- radio, um, and, and I have had my life established here. So right. it was, it, I needed some sort of like um, time to write this book, to, to live very deeply the lives of my characters. Do you like writing or do you prefer doing like TV or radio or is it different? Because a lot of people say when they read like Boris Itaguirre's new novel, they say, wow, that, that was written by Boris? Well, I have published three other novels with Planeta, quite successful. Yes. And I was the recipient of the, uh, I'm the runner-up of the Planeta Award in 2007. Yeah. For Via Diamante. Which is which, for Villa Diamante, right? It's, it's a book about a house that Gio Ponti, the Italian architect, built in Caracas in the 50s. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm from Caracas. Yes, I, well, yes, you're from Caracas, and, you've, and you came to Spain, and, and we're working this interview backwards. Have you realized that? <laughs> <laughs> you I'm know? sort of very chaotic, and it's probably the fact that I'm doing my no. first... This is English great. Speak, English spoken interview that is creating this sort of chaos. This is, you know what, chaos. We thrive on chaos around here. 
Yes, you know? the book is about that. Two Monsters Together is about that. It's, it's about the era of chaos, yeah. which I think we're living in. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think it started in September 11th of 2001. Do you think this is normal, or is this what they're calling now, like in the United States, like the new reality? Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, if you look back to those images of the uh, attack to the Twin Towers, yes. you realize that you, you, you are always mesmerized, and it's, the, it's, it's, it's a sort of like, it's like a surreal word to apply to that. Yeah. You're mesmerized both by the horror and also the unreali- uh, uh, unreality mm-hmm. of the reality. It's just, it, it seemed like a dream, didn't it? it in a way. It's more, but it's a, it's a, it's a terrific, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, not, it's a terrible dream. Well, a nightmare. It's more than a nightmare because it's real. It, it happened, and it's always happening every time you see it. What I mean, though, okay, I, I, September 11th is a great way to – it's a symbolic beginning, and I agree. It, it was like the beginning uh, – it was the turning point. Now, of chaos. Now, because of it's, chaos, it's, it's, yes. It's a time when reality stopped being reality. And, but became, but on, on, at the same time – It became something yeah. incredible, but it was that, that at the same time was happening. And at the same time, maybe this is this is just coincidental. But but along with the financial crisis, another interesting concept is part of this greed and things you're talking about is this new social networking and this whole world that we're like instantly connected. And and do you think sometimes I feel like we're moving too quickly? Well, um, most of the people that have read my book, they always said, I, I, when I finished, they, they always said, I, I feel exhausted. I'm exhausted. I mean, it's, it's, it's such, <laughs> yeah. it, this, this living on edge, but I think everybody is on edge, well, actually. Yes. And like things that happen are so um, um, uh, surprising that, 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 that you, you, you sometimes feel you have no way to understand how things are happening. Right. You see, and at the same time, that you, you you could put the facts together and make a conclusion, make 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 make, make a, a, an, an argument of these things, like understand them. Right. But when they happen, you're so disconcerted. It's like I mean, I just can't believe this is really happening. Yeah. Uh, wow. You and, know, and, and, and this is this, this this is the speed of things. Mm-hmm. This, this is what creates this velocity. That we cannot, it's like you, you know you're going too fast, but there's no way for you to pull up the brakes. There's right. no way at all. Okay, and this is the new reality. We're, we're all moving so quickly, and it's and it just, we know I we think, are. Yeah, I, I think I'm from okay. Patricia, they move very quickly, and they accept things that other people wouldn't accept. Like my parents, I think my parents will have put a limit to many things. They will say, I mean, I, I cannot keep on achieving this wealth. I cannot keep on doing all these tricks to become wealthier. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like um, that I had a sense of a stopping that mm-hmm. I believe uh, my kids, including me, uh, and, and the kids I might have, will, will not really uh, understand that, 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 that say, you know, saying, this is a limit, and you right. have to really respect this limit. Right. And it's we healthy, and it's so healthy. Like pull, but, out, right. pull, pull, out, pull, pull out all the stops. Pull out all the stops, but it's healthy for kids to know limits, and I think we need to somehow maintain some type of some types of limits, or it's going to perhaps get out of control too. But but you can't, how could you? Because this is, this is I think like if if you say that the Americans call it a new reality, I think the the Europeans are more keen to accept this turn of the era of chaos because as Alfredo and Patricia do in two monsters together, what they do is like they they go ahead with the chaos. I mean, they they don't say. We, we, we have to uh, pull somewhere that, that we can right. they, hold ourselves. They just go uh, along. Life in the fast lane. Yeah. And, and like, well, they sort of like feel it like, 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 like a free fall. Mm-hmm. And, and they are free falling. They are free falling. And the only thing they have is themselves. The sense of the couple that they sort of like work out in a very different uh, um, uh, uh, costumes that, that yeah. to, to, uh, to somebody, somebody else's. I mean, Patricia cheats on Alfredo continuously, mm-hmm. even with people that her same sex. And um, okay. but she's sort of like, she, she confides in explaining him, uh, if I cheat, because I need to be Patricia to hold the two of us together. together. So she's uh, just following her nature. And she's saying this, but I need to do this in order to keep the couple protected or to, to continue on. And at the end, Alfredo realizes that, that, that he, he is in love and that love is a major, major trap in life because right. it's the only thing that holds you, certainly, but at the same time requires you to 
deliver yourself entirely. But it doesn't require sacrifice. In order for a couple, if a couple is going to stay together, do each per, does each person end up sacrificing something? Certainly. Mm-hmm. Certainly. You start giving space away, which I do. I, I, this is what I've done in my couple, mm-hmm. actually, in my relationship. In your relationship. Yeah, mm-hmm. Ruben and I have been together for 19 years. And we married six years ago. Right. But uh, the first thing I, I thought right to do was to um, not create space for the two of us, but to give. Mm-hmm. Like I was accustomed to my own space. Is that, that what you always say? This is my this is my part personal of the space. This right. This is my part of the bed. This is my part of the bedroom. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. This, this is my part of my my part of the bathroom, and and then I decided that, that no, I had to like. Give up, give 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 that all out. You know? Like yield it, like give it away. Yeah. And, and if it comes back, <laughs> and and that's I think sort of like started. Right. But at the same time, I do feel a very profound love for him, certainly, and for and for our relationship too. And this is the only thing I can uh, say that is autobiographical in the book. Okay. So the rest. Of that, okay. So I won't go there. But let me ask you, Boris. By the way, if they're just tuning in. Our listeners, they're hearing someone on the other end. It's Boris Itaguirre, and we're talking about lots of different things. His new book is called Dos Monstros Juntos, published by Planeta. And by, and you also, uh, Barcelona and Valencia are part of this story as well. Yes, and, yes and, because Alfredo and Patricia meet in Barcelona. Okay. Yeah, but if the book um, th- does not really stop in those cities, I mean, it's like the, the, the major part of the book is New York, London. Okay, right. Uh it's true that it, I, I, I feel like if the book is well read and has many readers, it might have a sequel. And then probably oh. Barcelona might be a, a major okay. part of that. Because I, uh, I'm just thinking out loud on this, but um, I, I, I love it for it to happen. Certainly. And, and it, it presents it, it's a book that presents itself for a sequel. I suppose I always thought I wanted to, buy, to write like uh, three books on Patricia and Alfredo. Certainly, okay. yes. A trilogy. I mean, this is the first time mm-hmm. I say this out loud. Well, so this I'm is good. Like it's a revelation. It. <laughs> it's a revelation. It's, it's like the... the fact that I'm not speaking my, my, <laughs> my, my natural language, that I, I sort of like let myself go. You're, it's a newsflash. You feel less inhibited. Yes, most certainly, which is this, this is the one thing that I love about uh, speaking in speaking. another language. Yeah, you yeah. sort of like break all your rules, like you sort of like... Uh, Yes, feel less, less, less introspective. It's almost like having a side or a separate personality when we speak certainly, a different certainly. language. It's, it's great, and it's great listening to yourself speaking in another language. Mm-hmm. But then the thing about Valencia in the book, if we come back to that, yes, is that it's it's true that the book, it's um, all my all my books are are like based in a in an actual fact, right, and and that is also historic. Like for example, in Villa Diamante was the the building up of that house in Caracas during the 50s, which was a major time for Caracas when it was a very, very rich society. Very and cosmopolitan. It was like the yeah. capital of South America to the world. Yes. Right? And then, uh, uh, and then in two monsters together, it's this crisis. It's, it's, the, it's right. the economical uh, turmoil so, in Europe and the developed countries. There's a historical backdrop. That's all. I always need that. Okay. And then I and, and then I put the fiction before it, always. Very cool. Like, and, and then yeah. my characters, Alfredo and Patricia, sort of like walk in, walk out of several situations and uh, and facts that happened during that time. Like for example, they since Alfredo is a chef, they cook a meal uh, as a Thanksgiving dinner for Madoff. Ah, for just, Bernie Madoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, just the day, just the day before he turns in, as you remember, he 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 walked into his uh, building, the the, the right. lipstick building in 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 in, in uh, on the Third Avenue in New York on Fifty Seventh, right. and then on Fifty Fourth, and then he went over to his offices and told his his sons that he had made this 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 huge embezzlement. Right. And then uh, the day before, he and his wife and kids had, had given their 
their Thanksgiving dinner mm-hmm. a few days after Thanksgiving, of course, right. for all their employees. And if you have read many of the documents and the things that were written about Madoff, yes. most of the people that attended that dinner were curious about his behavior. He was sort of like hugging people and saying ah, like right. phrases. Like probably he was, he was sort of like staging his farewell. Right, he was staging so his then, farewell. So then when okay. I read that, I said, well, obviously, my Alfredo could have cooked that. That dinner. I see. He could have been the chef. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, so he is. Very in good. Very good. And, okay. and then in Valencia, you know, we have had this major, major, major corruption case of uh, Gurtel, which right. was uh, a, a series of enterprises that work with the, with the government. Right. So that formed that, part of the part backdrop. Part of the country. And then they also do the catering, as they, as they say here right. in, in Madrid. You know, they use this English word supposedly to... Um, Catering, to, to, yeah, to to, to yeah. explain these 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 meals that you prepare. Sure. Well, at we say house. Well, it's a catering, right? A catering, right? Right. Okay. So then they, uh, Alfredo uh, does the catering for his brother's wedding mm-hmm. to the son of a, a, a major figure in the book who is kind of like a people sort of like related to Gurte. Okay, so there's always a historical backdrop. You know what? Let me ask you, just because we have like practically zero time left, we're finishing up, but but like Caracas and Madrid and back and forth in the Americas, and you talked a little bit about, can you just give me a perspective? Is it is it like, for me, sometimes it's comparing apples and oranges. Are you, uh, do you, do you ever long for Caracas or do you ever think about going back or are you happy here or? I, I don't think I have time to... to, to we I mean, don't. I, 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 we don't have I time to go think into that. that. Probably if I go back to Caracas, uh, I will either have to accept being sort of like a personality. I have always, my whole life, been trying to evade. I mean, I, I don't want to be that, that, you know, like that person that su- has success in, in Europe and then comes back to its own country. I see what you mean. Like, like, like sort of like pro- procrastinating, you know, like, yeah. like saying... Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, I had success because of this and this and this. I hate that. So this is the one reason probably why I don't feel I should go back to Caracas. But I do, and I have worked there a lot. Yes. I have been the host for the Miss Venezuela pageant, which is a major, major... Uh, it's, it's, it's like the Oscars for the Venezuelan television. Huge, isn't it? It's huge. Yeah. Venezuela has some, it's an interesting uh, industry. They always seem to be on top. The, the Miss Venezuela, they're always like winning Miss World, and they're, they're very and beautiful. Universe. And Miss Universe. That's yeah, what I we, meant. We, yeah. We've won it six times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it, it, it's sort of like a, a cultural identity to my country, mm-hmm. I believe. There's, of course, this could bother many, many people, but it's true. It, it, it's well, sort of like yeah. it, it, it tells who we are and what we believe on. And I, I always tend to respect that kind of thing. Like if people relate to a thing, then you have to analyze why they do relate to that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I felt very honored to be part of that for the last well, few years, certainly. Very fascinating. And I am very well known in Caracas because of that, certainly. Right. But, you know, I mean, I do miss many things of my city, like the light and the mountain, the Avila, which is a huge, huge, huge mountain. And I, and I, and I feel very, very part of it. Right, certainly. a big part of it, of course. It's, and, yeah. and also uh, the demeanor. I mean, the, 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 the way of being of the Caracanos is very upgoing, social, uh, very frivolous, too, of course in the good and the bad uh, Mm -hmm. part of it. And I am very much that. I am very much a Caracaño. But I have had, I have the great fortune to be able um, to live in other cities. I always wanted that. And I have got it. Absolutely. Mm. Well, listen, it's been... This is probably what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm... um, I'm a Caracaño that has lived in many cities. <laughs> right, and that, that, and, never, and that never goes away. That never goes away. That's just part of... Well, you know, I mean, I, I, since I've been living for so long with one person, like, like our, my relationship with Ruben, it, that has sort of like tamed my aspirations of being somebody that was always on the move. Right, I But see. Um, at, at heart, I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm still that kind of adventurer and, and that I am... But I wouldn't do it alone. Well, I have always, I always have to think that I have to 
work it out with Ruben, of course. Well, you can work it out. You can you can continue on with your sequel to Dos Monstros Juntos, <laughs> and we'll look we'll look forward to that. I know that's not that's something that just came out now, but I I really uh, appreciate uh, your your participating on the program, Boris. Oh, thank and you. Me too. It was a pleasure uh, meeting you uh, over the air, over the airwaves. Yeah, and well, it's a, we have to be there. You have to go over here. We always throw great parties here in London, too. Well, absolutely. I would love to. Yeah, Thank and then you, you could meet much. all our friends. We do have some <laughs> Americans in London, and they're always so lost. <laughs> and just the first thing they complain is the language. Well, the they time. don't. They you know, the underground is the subway. You know, the lorry is the truck. If come yes. on, you know, I mean, they call it. They they need to you know change the language. No, and the way they relay <laughs> because I think uh, English girls at least they're, they're very very against the boys. The American oh. boys. Well, we could do a series on that. We'll have to. That's a topic for another day, it's, Boris. It's a great story <laughs> because all my all my English friends they always say, "Whatever you wish." I mean, what, what, I could take any guy, but please, no American. So how <laughs> come? It's easier for you, and they say it's not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Boris Hithagirre, it's been a pleasure. We're going to take a break, and I'm going to keep your eyes. Everyone's going to keep their eyes out for Dos Monstros Juntos, and best of luck with the, with the novel. Thank you. And and congratulations on your interview in English. It was great. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take care, Boris. It's a pleasure to meet you. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 And we have to take a break, so we'll be right back. 